Dienstag, 26. Mai 2015. Willkommen zu einem neuen Wettervideo. Ich bin Marco Kaschuba. Heute mit dem Thema Tornados. Wie verhält man sich bei einem Tornado? Welche Gefahren gehen von einem Tornado aus? Und wie wichtig sind Unwetterwarnungen im Fernsehen und im Radio? Und dazu habe ich auch einen Gast eingeladen. Bei mir ist es im Moment 2 Uhr nachts, bei ihm ist es 7 Uhr abends. Ich bin in Garmisch-Badenkirchen und er ist in Alabama, USA. Er ist Chefmeteorologe bei ABC. Und er hat mehrere Preise erhalten. Für viele Menschen ist er ein Held, weil er bei extremen Unwetterlagen für viele Stunden vor dem Fernsehen steht und live berichtet und die Menschen aufklärt und damit auch viele Leben rettet. Herzlich willkommen, James Ben. How are you, James? I'm very well. How are you, Marco? I'm fine. Thank you. In 2001, so it's uh, 14 years ago, me and my wife visited you for the first time at the ABC 3340 news station in Alabama and you showed us the storm chasing vehicle, the weather center and we could be live on your show and that was really awesome. And in 2011, a few days after this violent tornado in Tuscaloosa, we could visit you again and it was a pleasure for me. And Thank you so much for that, James. Well, it's an honor to have you come and visit. Uh, we we have the wildest weather in the world, I think, sometimes here. So uh, uh, th thank, thank goodness it's fairly calm this evening. In fact, uh, as we're speaking now, we have tornadoes in parts of the United States, in parts of Texas and Arkansas and Louisiana, but not where I am, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. And crazy flood there in, in Texas and Oklahoma. And right. There, there's a very severe flooding in parts of the state of Texas uh, tonight. The city of Austin is partly underwater, so it's very, very severe. It's not good yet. My dad lived in Tuscaloosa, and for me, it's still like a second homeland. And, you know, I always was fascinated by weather, but my passion for weather and storms started in Alabama. And today it's my job. And I remember as a teenager, I watched you on television uh, every day. And now that's 20 years ago. Yeah, that's uh, time flies. But uh, no, it's uh, it, most people that get into this business have events that influence them when they were young. It happened to me. And uh, they ultimately wind up getting into weather or if maybe not doing it professionally. They, they serve as a volunteer storm spotter. So uh, big, severe weather events can have a profound impact on young people for sure. Not only for me, you are one of the greatest meteorologists, but also for thousands of people in the US, you are a hero. In extreme weather situations, um, you tell the people what to do, where a storm is moving, and you give them uh, safety tips how to survive these storms, live on television and radio. And of course, this saves lives. And how I said, uh, I had family in Alabama, so I know what I'm talking about. Thanks for that, James. Well, it's the most important thing that I do. Uh, thank goodness we don't do it that often. Often, young people get into meteorology careers thinking they'll have tornadoes on a very frequent basis. In, in reality, they don't happen that often. But when they do, that becomes the most important thing that you do when weather becomes life-threatening. And if you can provide early warning and give people notice and tell them what to do, It becomes a very important service, and that's been the most rewarding part of this job over the years. Um, here in Germany, which is the size of, I don't know, California maybe, there are 20 to 40 tornadoes each year. And this year, there have been two F3 tornadoes so far that have caused major damage, and there were many injured people. And most people here in Europe do not have that weather awareness like the people in the United States. I mean, we don't have that amount of extreme weather like you have, but we're also dealing with strong storms, giant hail, and yes, there are tornadoes too, also strong ones. But most people don't really know what to do if there's a tornado or a severe weather emergency situation, and many of them stand in front of the window and just watch or just film it with a cell phone, and they don't realize or realize too late maybe that they are in a very dangerous situation. So please explain what to do if there is a tornado on the ground, if you are in your house or in a building. Well, the, the, the first thing we like for people to do is to know that they're coming. And, and it's obviously different in, in Germany. 
Uh, I would assume your government has a warning system, and whatever method you can have to hear those warnings is very important. But if you know there's a tornado coming, there's a few fairly simple rules. And, and the first rule is very important, and, and as I've seen some of the tornado video in Germany, it's this. People should never, ever be in a, an automobile, a vehicle, a mm -hmm. bus, a car, a truck. Those are basically death traps during a tornado. And people need to understand that a tornado is a violently rotating column of air. It's a violently rotating updraft. So it basically lofts objects up from below. And it can take a car and throw it uh, many, many, many meters. We had a series of vehicles that were flipped in Mexico today where mm -hmm. we had some loss of life. So when, when, you pictures, think about, yes. mm -hmm. when you think about these tornadoes, the first thing you have to do is be sure you're not in a vehicle. Whatever you have to do, stop at your first point uh, that's possible and get into uh, any site-built store, a home, a structure, anything like that is better than a car. And if you have to, lie flat on the ground and, and cover mm -hmm. your head with your arms. It, it, most people in the United States die in vehicles or in mobile homes. And I don't think you have that issue in Germany, uh, but those can go airborne as well. But for people that are in, let's say they're at home or they're at work and th there are some very simple things to do. And the first thing to do is to get off of the higher levels of a building. If mm -hmm. you are on a building, a structure with multiple floors, you cannot be above the first floor. You don't have to be underground, but you cannot be on the second, third, fourth, or fifth floor or anywhere up. As you go higher, the winds are higher. So we want people on the lowest floor. And if there is an underground part of the building, that's even better. But if there's no underground, that's okay. You can survive a tornado above ground, but you have to be on the first floor. The next thing is to be in a small room, a hallway, a closet. Anything that's small, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the structures are much sturdier. And then you want to be near the center of the building, the, the, as close to the center as you can. We, we put it this way. Put as many walls between you and the outside as you can. Uh, and obviously away from windows. We, we, over and over, we have seen people looking out the window and shooting video. Yes, what yes, happens yes. with windows, large debris will fly through there. This could be a brick. This could be a board. And with the large, violent tornado, wind velocities could exceed 175 miles an hour. And that's the type of wind force is propelling that through that window. Mm -hmm. And you're putting yourself at great danger. So you should never be close to a window. So small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. And if you do that, you'll be safe almost every single time. In the car, that's an interesting um, thing. Most people uh, think they're they are pretty safe in the car because uh, if there is lightning or hail or rain, you're pretty safe in, in your car. But if there's a tornado, it's a whole different story, right? Right. Mm. Uh, yes, lightning, we want people in a car. That's a great place to be. A vehicle, mm. vehicle is very safe for, for, from a thunderstorm, from lightning. But with a tornado, let's say even a small tornado can flip a vehicle just like that. And that If you're not secured, uh, it can prevent. It can cause very serious injury. And if you have a strong, violent tornado, we, we consider a strong, violent tornado an EF4 or an EF5. Those can take a car and push them far, far away, carry them very high off the ground, many, many, many meters up. And often people will lose their life as the car comes back down. And uh, again, most of our loss of life, people are in cars and. Uh, I, I know it's very inconvenient, and I know people are busy, and you're trying to get somewhere. You might be trying to get home from work, or maybe you're trying to go to work, but your life just isn't your, – your life is worth more than being on time. Yeah, so right. whatever you can, get out of the car. And the other thing to consider, too, what, what is somewhat disturbing, we see a lot of people today in cars shooting video. <laughs> of tornadoes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And these are people that have no training. Now, if you've been trained, that's okay. You're fine because, Marco, you've been trained. You understand. Yes, But yes. most people most people have not. And we have reason to believe we had ha we've had in my state multiple people that have been killed trying to shoot tornado video to put up on YouTube mm. where they're thinking they'll get some Google AdSense money and they'll make a lot of money off their videos. And, again, your life isn't worth that. 
if you have not been trained, you have no business being in a car shooting video. So how important is the weather awareness or severe weather education for kids? It's, it's very important. As you know, one of the things I do every day, I speak in schools, in public schools and private schools, uh, teaching the basic science. I, I'm a big believer in getting children excited in science. Some people did that for me when I was young, and mm -hmm. I like to do that for others when they're young, for the next generation. And after sharing the science, we always share the, the, the basic tornado safety guidelines we've talked about here. And, and the one thing that, that I wanted to mention Wherever and every family should know where they're going in every home, every home, they should know where they're going to go if there is a tornado. And wherever that place is, that small room on the lowest floor near the center, away from windows, you should have a few items there for you and your family. And what we have learned through medical research in our country, if you wear a helmet, it greatly enhances your chance of surviving okay uh, mm -hmm. like vehicles humans can be lofted this is a horrible horrible thing to think about but in a strong violent tornado humans can be picked up and carried aloft in a tornado and often they lose their life due to severe wounds to the skull region if you wear a bicycle helmet mm -hmm. any sporting type helmet Uh, we have peer-reviewed research now that proves that that will greatly, greatly enhance your chance of surviving. So having a helmet Thank is you. a very important thing for everybody. And this is for adults and not just children. We also like for people to have maybe a whistle or an air horn. In our case, a lot of people bled to death in recent tornado outbreaks because the first responders could not find them. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. lofted. They were carried far from their home. And also during a tornado disaster, you can't even recognize a neighborhood. And mm -hmm. these people were injured and they couldn't audibly make a sound. And they bled to death because the first responders could not find them. But if they could blow a whistle, uh, the first responders can hear that and they will know where you are. And an air horn is even better. An air horn, you just squeeze it. You don't have to you know, force air through your lungs. You yes, squeeze yes, the yes. air horn and they can hear you. So helmets and air horns are important. And one other simple thing to think about, Marco, it's... Uh, Hard sole shoes. Uh, if you have no shoes or soft sole shoes, tennis shoes or athletic shoes, yes. if, if you have to walk for assistance, if you have to walk for help, uh, the objects in a tornado debris field will pierce your feet. Mm. Uh, shrapnel, uh, splinters, uh, glass. Yes. And mm. some people had to have their feet amputated after the recent big tornado outbreak here because they didn't have on hard sole shoes. Mm -hmm. And identification, if you have special medical needs, in, in anything you can put on your person to help the paramedics, that, that, that enhances your chance of surviving if we have a big tornado. Be sure that everybody in the family understands this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those that might come to visit you, your children, uh, anybody that might be in your home. Mm -hmm. Because you can have a tornado at night or during the day. You can have a tornado at a time where maybe visitors are there. You can have a tornado at holiday times when, when many people are coming to visit you. And uh, often people are in your home and there's a tornado warning, a warning of a tornado, and you don't know what to do. It, it, the time to think about it, it's not when there's a tornado down the street. You think about it now when there are no tornadoes. And You should never be afraid of them. We, we have some people in my country that have a phobia, that they have a genuine fear of these. Mm. They don't happen that often. They really don't. It's, it's like a fire, though. They can happen. Mm. And there have been so many people that have died on my watch. I, I have been here for 36 years. And it pains me with the state of the science to see the loss of life that we're still seeing. The warnings are very good. Mm -hmm. But yet people just are not taking it seriously. And if you do the simple things we talked about, have a way of knowing they're coming, knowing where you're going in your home, uh, having a kit of the things we talked about, then, then you'll be just fine. It's not that complicated. Um, how important is live coverage on, on television side and radio while severe weather outbreaks? We, it's, it's the most important thing we do um, in, here in The United States, uh, a lot of people watch Netflix and, and they, they watch movies uh, on their phone. And uh, the, the live television is not as important as it used to be. But when there are tornadoes, everybody watches local television or they listen to local radio for mm -hmm. the coverage. And, and the way we do it here, if we have a tornado in my market, 
we stop whatever is on television, whether it's a sporting event, a uh, primetime programming, mm -hmm. Dancing with the Stars, American Idol, a football <laughs> game, a soccer match. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. We cover that up with local tornado coverage and that that is an immediate threat to life and property. And in television, that is our prime goal. It's to serve the public interest and needs. And uh, we're very aggressive. And uh, one of the things that we have learned, and we often rely on weather radar, which is very important, but we have learned that when people see weather radar, they don't necessarily do anything. And we have learned that it is much, it is very important for us to show live video of the tornadoes. So mm -hmm. we have put cameras in so many places around my state. And on top of that, we have volunteers that, that are trained like you that, that are knowledgeable and mm -hmm. they are safe in these type of events, but they go out in their vehicle with a dash cam and okay. we can take their dash cam on the air. And if we can show a live stream of a tornado, we know that people will do something then. So, so if uh, the people see that tornado is coming, they, they take it serious. Right. And, so, okay. uh, and where if we show if we show radar, they see colors, they see a lot of reds yes, and yellows yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they don't understand. Mm -hmm. We have so many radar products we can show. We can show products that, that show the intensity of the rain, the reflectivity. We can show products that show wind velocity. We can show new products that can show where debris is being lofted. And, and for us, it is clear as could be. But for the public, mm. we understand that they're not seeing the same thing we're seeing. So we have to do a better job of actually showing video of tornadoes. And we're working on that. We can never make that happen completely. And that's one thing people need to understand. Yes. They will not always see a tornado. And you, you know this better than anybody. Many tornadoes don't happen during the day. They happen at night. Yes. Uh, and many tornadoes are totally, totally wrapped in rain. Mm. Uh, th there's an illusion that you should see all of them. And uh, often the video that you see, the video comes from the Great Plains of the United States, where there are no hills, no trees, the storms are dry. Yeah, right. uh, in other parts of the world, they're going to be rain wrapped. Uh, you will have terrain, the, the, the terrain you have in Germany. You can't see a lot of these things. And before right. you know yeah. it, they are up and on you. So that's something else to remember. You just cannot always see them. And the television meteorologists cannot always show them. We do our best, mm. but we cannot always do that. So what about a social network like Facebook and Twitter? And what about a weather and warning apps? Do you think this is a good way to communicate warnings? Nowadays? Yes. Uh, in, in your case, that's probably going to be the best way. Most people today have a phone. Mm. And most people today have access to a social media platform. Yes. And um, th there are those in your country that uh, pass on weather information. And what you, you're, what you need to do is to find out a good source that you can rely on. Mm. Uh, not necessarily a 10-year-old child that likes weather, but somebody <laughs> like you that really understands weather. That yes, has a, a firm grasp on it. And if they can follow you, whether it be Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus or Instagram or whatever the platform is, that is a marvelous way of getting information in and also passing information on. It, Twitter and Facebook, those are my windows to the world during severe weather outbreaks because there might be a situation where I don't have a camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see pictures that people have sent to me via Twitter and Facebook and video that people have sent to me. Uh, they, they send Vine videos, which is a social media platform. So absolutely, in, in your case, without a national weather radio uh, warning type setup, social media is very, very critical and very useful. James, it was, uh, it was an honor for me that I could talk with you about tornadoes and, and weather and... I hope I can visit sweet home Alabama again very soon. Marco, you come back anytime you want to. We're just here <laughs> waiting on you. Great. Thank you. And by the way, if you, you and your wife decide to visit Germany or Europe, please give me a call so we can go to Bavaria and drink a beer or two. I, I would, would love great. to do that. I would love <laughs> to do that. We just have to find a week off here. That's the hardest thing in my business is taking time off. But one of these days, I will. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Gut, das war's für diese Woche. Vielen Dank fürs Reinschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Vielen Dank nochmal an James Ben. Bis dann. Ciao.